Now, I'm sure you've noticed, I don't need to tell you this, but the weather is not good, right? It's a, There's a lot of rain. I mean, great for the plants, right? But there's a lot of rain right now. There's a lot of wind. It's not great for going out and taking photos. If it gets particularly stormy, I might go out and try and take a photo of that. Maybe that'll be a future tutorial Tuesday. But for now, it's staying indoors weather. We're going to edit an old photo. We're going to revisit a photo I took back in 2018 that, if I'm honest, I'm not totally happy with. And this can be a really interesting exercise, a really useful exercise, actually, to work out what you want from your photography, to work out how you would have composed a photo differently. We're going to dive into Photoshop this time. We're going to re-edit it. We're going to explore it. Let's get into it. This tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every, each and every Tuesday we bring you a brand new fresh photography tutorial. They're getting too wild. These fresh ones, they're getting too wild. Let's dive into Photoshop. We're going to be looking at this photo. Now, like I said, I took this in 2018. This was in South Wales. This was quite a big hike to get out to this waterfall, actually. And then there were loads of them. It was lovely. It was beautiful. I got, I got a lot of photos that I'm really happy with. I'm not totally unhappy with this photo. I think it's... I think it's fine. I just know that I would have composed this very differently. I don't know why I didn't center it up. I don't know why I didn't get a little bit closer. You know, to make it bigger in the frame. I don't know why I didn't take it in a portrait kind of orientation. Well, I do know a little bit why. I, I did this because probably I was thinking to myself, rule of thirds, let's pop it on one of the intersections, right? And that's probably why I did it. But it's not ideal. Like I say, not the worst photo I've ever taken, but probably a slightly missed opportunity. But by coming back to it now, it's what, five years later? I can revisit how I would have taken this photo, what I would have liked to have done. We're going to re-edit it. We're going to do some things differently with the edit. And I'm going to try and come out with the kind of photo that I should have taken. We're going to use a few little tricks. We're actually using the Photoshop beta app as well, which we showed off last week. We were looking at generative fill and generative expand. We are going to use some of the Photoshop AI tools that are available to us in the Photoshop beta, which are really interesting. We're going to play around with this. We're going to see kind of where we can get to. Let's get started. Now, the first thing I want to do, the, the number one thing that bothers me about this photo is the crop, right? I, I need to come in and I need to crop this. So I'm going to bring it to something like, something like this. I want to roughly center up this waterfall. I think it's fine with the rock kind of being cut off here. I think that's absolutely fine. I don't need all of this space over to the side. I have no idea why I kept that. I want to add a little bit of space to the bottom and a little bit of space to the top. This is where we're going to use generative expand, which we talked about last week. In fact, we used this photo as one of the examples. And then I just sort of started playing around with it and I wanted to do it as a video. So let's go for something like this, right? We want a reasonably sort of tall photo and let's just click generative expand down here and then generate. And Photoshop's going to fill in those kind of blank areas there using AI to actually just fill in those blank areas and, and just fill out the photo as it should be. There we go. And I think it's done. It's done a really nice job, actually. That looks pretty good. We've got three options here to choose from. I think probably they all look fine. I'm going to go with this middle one. I think that I think that looks absolutely fine. We've got trees up at the top. We've got rocks and water down at the bottom. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I should have gotten closer to this waterfall, I think. I, 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 I think it's fine like this, but I wish I had gotten closer. And we're going to make that work for us now. So I'm actually going to go ahead and press Control, Shift, Alt, and E to make a new layer, which is a combination of all the layers beneath it. So we've got a nice new layer there, which we can work with, which includes all of these layers of so the background layer and then the generative fill layer that we just made on top of that. We've got this nice new layer. So we're kind of working very non-destructively. I'm going to use the rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to select the waterfall here, like so. And what I'm going to do there is do it again. Control, Shift, Alt, and E, and then we've made another layer. And if I press Control T, I can now resize this. I'm going to hold Control and then left click. I'm going to drag this up. I want to resize this a little bit like this. I'm going to bring. I'm even going to bring this down just a touch as well. I want to make it a little bit grander in the uh, in the overall photograph. Let's go for something like that. That looks pretty good. We can press this tick. Now I'm going to press Control D to deselect. Great, so the waterfall is now a little bit bigger, a little bit grander. This is what it would have appeared like if I'd gotten a little bit closer. But the problem we've got now, as you can see, is we've got these lines which we don't like. We, we, you know, it's very obvious what I've done, right? 
we don't want to be dealing with that. So let's zoom out a little bit here. Let's go ahead and actually click on this up here, the lasso tool. And we're actually going to make a selection now pretty much of just that line. So let, I'll tell you what, let's start down here. Let's start somewhere like here. And I'm just going to come around. I want to get all the way outside this line. I do want to come, I guess, across the water like this. And then what I'm going to do is, is just come back on myself, come up here. So I'm, I'm getting inside the line now. This might be a lot easier if I was using uh, like a graphic tablet and using a pen, but I'm not, I'm using a mouse, no problem. Okay, we've made a selection roughly there. I'm going to click Generative Fill, and then I'm going to leave that blank and just click Generate. And hopefully Photoshop's going to basically just sort that out for me. The AI is just going to go in and fix that problem. Okay, immediately, that's really good. I'm pretty happy with that. If I hold Alt and just left click on the eye icon on the background layer, this is how the photo started. I mean, not even really, because we, we actually cropped the original photo as well. And this is where we've gotten to. And I think it looks it looks good, right? I think I'm really happy with kind of how we've how we've gotten so far. And the benefit of doing this, like I say, even though this is now becoming more digital art than photography, is this really informs my choices next time I go to take a photograph like this. It really tells me more about what I was looking for in the photograph. Okay, so next we're actually gonna do some some more sort of straightforward editing now. I'm actually gonna go for a new adjustment layer color lookup. I'm going to go for a load 3D LUT. Let's go for teal orange plus contrast. We're going to bring the opacity down to something like maybe something like 40%. I think I think that looks pretty good. It's quite stylized, but maybe we'll even go down to 35%. But I think that actually looks pretty cool. It's, it's relatively uh, stylized now, which I, I really like. Now let's go for a new layer. Let's get the paintbrush and let's select black as our color. And I'm actually just going to paint in some black in different areas around the photo. I know you're thinking, that does not look very good. I, I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> but what we're going to do is uh, is we're actually going to come down and, and change the blending mode, something like multiply. It probably doesn't matter. Actually, I could have left it as normal and then just reduce the opacity down to something like 20, 22% maybe. If we turn that layer off and then on, all we're doing is darkening certain areas of the photograph. Now it might be that we don't need to do that, that's we can come back and remove that layer if we want to. The next thing I'm going to do as well is actually come up to a curves adjustment layer and I'm going to just bring up the midpoint a little bit like so but bring that lower shadow point down a little bit. We're adding a little bit of contrast there, I don't want to go too crazy with it. We can always come in and, and change this a little bit later but if I turn that off and back on we're just making that waterfall pop. Okay. Great. I think this looks this looks really nice. Actually, I, I like where we've gotten to with this. Let's do a couple of extra little bits that I think will really finish this off. Now, for this in particular, I'm actually going to bring in a couple of overlays that I have from, you know, the internet. I've downloaded them from the internet. You can actually just Google things like fog overlay or mist overlay, and you'll find all kinds of interesting ones. Some are free, some are paid. I'm going to drag a couple of those in. So let's just bring in something like this. That's a nice kind of fog overlay. We can go ahead and just change the blending mode to screen. So if you ever get these kind of things where they've got a black background, just change the blending mode to screen and it's going to work really well. I'm going to resize this slightly. So just make it a little bit smaller. I kind of want to position this over where the water kind of hits the water, I guess. Look at that. That looks really cool, actually. Now we can just bring the opacity down maybe a touch. But I think that does actually look really good. There's another fog overlay. I'll bring that in. Let's pop it to screen, resize it a little bit. That actually looks pretty cool to help with the kind of water creating this big spray. Let's go ahead and add a, a layer mask for the second one. And with black selected, we can paint out some of this that we don't necessarily need. If you go too far, you can just press Control Z, not a problem. But I think that looks pretty good. And we can actually bring the overlay down again as well. Look at that. That looks lovely. We're going to do a very similar thing where we're going to bring in a bit of a glow. So again, you can get all kinds of stuff like this online. You could make your own if you want to. This is kind of a white to orange gradient, I suppose, radial gradient. So we could do that, but it's easy to get them, get them online. We're going to bring that up to kind of the top here. Same exact thing. Make it as screen as the blending mode. But look at that. Let's bring the opacity down on that a little bit just to accentuate that kind of light that we've got going on up there. 
I think that that looks really, really cool. Now I'm going to do a final kind of color grade on this. So we're going to color look up again. I'm going to look at something like maybe bleach bypass. Now at 100% bleach bypass is crazy. Not going to work. But if we bring down that opacity again, it's just really making that waterfall pop. And I, I like the look of it. I might even go for another color look up. Maybe even something like maybe film stock. Let's bring the opacity down of that. That just sort of, mm, that's really popping everything, which I really like. And that is a wildly different photograph to the one that I took. I'll show you the one I took on screen now. This was the original photograph where we started and this is where we've taken it to. Now, again, like I said, this is verging towards more digital art than actual straight up. We've done quite a lot to this photo now, but you know, it's like I say, it's a valuable process because while this isn't specifically a photograph that I've taken now, this informs me next time I go to take photographs like this, how I actually would have liked this to look. Because sometimes it can look different through the camera to when you get onto the computer and you think, oh, I wish I'd, I wish I'd done things a little bit differently. Have I over edited it? Maybe. I do tend to in these videos <laughs> because we're kind of pushing this as far as we can go. I love trying to push even sometimes pass that line a little bit of what I think is okay, just because it does inform me for how I want to take my photos in future. So I think that's that's valuable and there's always stuff to learn, right? But I'd love to know, where was your line? Where would you have stopped? Where was too much? Was it when we made the waterfall bigger? <laughs> That that's fair enough if that's where it is. Was it some of the overlays? I'd love to hear your thoughts about this kind of stuff because I think it's really, really interesting. And you know, we've talked about it in the past, but with the rise of all this AI stuff, it's not going away anytime soon. And it's only going to get more and more prevalent. And it's going to be difficult to distinguish sometimes what's real and what's not because it's getting very impressive. Let me know down in the comments what you think about all of that. Of course, there's a list of all the kit that we use for this photo, for all this video, all this kind of stuff. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well. There's new stuff all the time. I'll see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.